So gracious Father, we just thank you that you are a good, good Father. We thank you that we are number one to you, and we're so grateful for that. No matter what we do, no matter what we fall short in, we're always number one in your eyes because we're created in, this, in the image of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So Father, we're praising you right now that today is an awesome day because you've allowed us all to have it. And we're thanking you right now that the word is going to be powerful, mighty, and we're thanking you that it's Holy Spirit inspired without a doubt. So Father, we're praising you right now. We're inviting you into this service so that Lord, you'll move mightily in all areas, in every heart that's here, every heart that's listening, every heart that will be listening in the future, Father. We're thanking you that you are gonna to touch all of us because you can do that. And we thank you for your love, unconditional love, and all God's people said. Pastor is not here today, as you can tell. Um, I need longer hair and different, <laughs> anyway, we're not going there, a little shorter, yeah, there you go. Anyway, um, she is at a birthday party for the miracle baby, a uh, little Ken late today, okay? So grandma don't want to miss out on number on her first birthday party for her without a doubt. So, but I have the honor to introduce somebody that uh, I know he loves the Lord. I know that yeah. it's going to be a powerful word today. And each and every one of us are going to receive something awesome without a doubt. So just prepare your hearts for what's going to take place. So I'm introducing Mr. Tim. He's going to come up and share what the Lord has placed upon his heart, and I know it's going to be good. Amen? Amen. Thank you, sir. Let me just start with a prayer. Lord, I just thank you for this morning, Lord. Lord, I pray for every person that's here and those that couldn't make it. Lord, I pray that they would be blessed in a special way. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to be able to bring the word, Lord. And I pray that you would speak through me this morning, Lord, that they'd hear my voice, but they'd hear your words. Amen. Lord, I thank you for all these things, especially for you, your love for us, that you paid the ultimate price. And I just pray these things all in Christ's name. Amen. 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 We're getting close to Thanksgiving. Amen. A time to be thankful. Amen. And yet it seems like so many things are so changed. Maybe to us personally, that someone's not around the table that used to be. Hmm. And now it's um, a celebration. But at the same time, it's a celebration of only a few people can be in a house at a time and definitely has changed things dramatically. Even if a, some, somebody's in the hospital today, as Natalie and I were driving home and so many things have been happening in this town lately and it affects so many more people than just those that are no longer. There's a huge rippling effect mm -hmm. that have touched so many others. And certainly as a church and body, we need to be prayerful in all those different situations right now. And we're driving home, and as we're driving home, and hearing of a family um, that was killed, uh, four people, and how troubling it is to hear of the loss of life. And health care providers and those that are dealing with the mentally ill are on a strain far greater than we can even begin to imagine. So we certainly need to lift them up and be prayerful in the help that they're trying to give them that they don't grow weary because it can happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yet at the same time, this is a time of supposedly thanksgiving and yet challenged in so many ways. As I say, Natalie and I were driving home and after all the things that have happened, as we get close to her house, there's two ambulances and we're like, oh no, what happened now? Mm -hmm. And our mind quickly races it's almost the worst because that's the way it has seemed lately. And fortunately, it was um, 
the neighbor lady, but nothing critical. But um, uh, she had hip surgery, and they think that she might need to have another hip surgery. Mm -hmm. But certainly to um, be prayerful for that family as well. But as we look at Thanksgiving and our challenge in ways like we've never been challenged as a town, as a country, as a nation, and wondering, even when we see somebody, and we might even look at Facebook, and Facebook would say, be careful what we say to somebody. We don't know where they are. Mm -hmm. It's not like somebody written on their forehead, I'm depressed. Right. Or there's no indication of what condition they are physically or emotionally that we could become more sensitive, more discerning. I would like for us to look up Colossians 3, the page number is 1354. 1354. As we look at this time, this season, and being grateful. And I'll be reading Colossians 3. Verse 15 through 17. Everybody said, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Not only were we called, but and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom and teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do, do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So as we started this morning and we sang praise and worship, and it's always so uplifting and so encouraging and wow, it gets you ready. And when you leave, it's not like you've left the songs behind, but sing them throughout the day. If you're anything like me, and I've got a terrible voice, so hopefully there's not a lot of people around. <laughs> but I love them. And even as we sing, Glory to glory. I love that song. When Natalie and I are standing there, I'm like, oh, I love this song. But one of the things that I like about them is no matter the difficulty that we're going through at the time, God brings things to completeness. Sometimes it's like, uh, it says his will and his timing are always perfect. And sometimes I question the timing because I'd sure like to move things ahead sometimes, but he's, it is true. Even if we looked at, um, if I looked back last year, because I think I'll, we'll probably only be here for a couple more weeks and going to warmer weather. Aww. Hopefully you won't get snow as we're gone. <laughs> but I, I miss this church body. Um, so many times the things that I was taught growing up about the church body and when one part hurts we hurt with and the things that Natalie and I have gone through you hurt with us and we couldn't be more grateful or thankful it says when one part rejoices we rejoice with and the way that the pastor speaks about the church body is a way I never heard. But she encompasses the other churches in the areas. Amen. That's right. And their beliefs, and as they minister to each other, hey, we might be the eyes, they might be the feet. But I love that example of unity. Yeah. Especially today when we see so little of it. But unity as she 
encourages us to think and as a church body stand behind each other. There have been numerous who have um, prayed for Natalie and I, especially for her, gave her a word of encouragement and you have no idea what it's meant. I'm not sure I'm capable of bringing that kind of even word to explain how it is. Priceless. But it says another thing about the body. They're interested in more than just themselves, but to nurture, to strengthen, to help, to pray, to encourage, all those things to us to a hurting world, and we see the herd growing bigger, not smaller. Yeah. And as I think about gratefulness, I also think of what are the things that could hinder being grateful? Because sometimes those things can come along as, as much as we'd like to be grateful, sometimes there are challenges and Getting, becoming grateful and thankful and noticing. There was one guy, he decided he was going to um, write about one thing every day to be, that he could be thankful. And Natalie and I sometimes do that. I was, about three weeks ago, I said, I think we should think of something to be grateful. And I'm a good starter, not so good at the finish. <laughs> But sometimes we're, we think of that and what are we grateful for? We can be grateful to each other. We can be grateful that God seen something in us that we didn't see in ourselves. And he, as I said earlier, he's bringing us to completeness. We're not there yet. At least I'm not. As I look at this verse right here, some of the things that can hinder being grateful and thankful is do we really trust in the Lord with all our heart? Do we lean on Tim's understanding or God's understanding? In our own ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. When I went to church, that I'd been gone a long while, the very verse that was on um, the program happened to be that verse. And then I was digging through some stuff at home and I seen my name was written on and underneath it was that verse. And I was like, this is something that must be very challenging to me, but he wants me and each of you to trust him wholly and completely in spite of what we can see and can't see that he's going to be with you. He says, I will never leave you or forsake you. I'm going to be with you. If we look at Philippians uh, page 1351, Philippians 4. When I look at Philippians, one of the verses that always comes to my mind quickly is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. And it is true. There's not an except for this or except for that, but all things, That's right. all things. But we have to give them. We can't keep them. Right. And if I look at, so if we look at that, we're going to be reading um, Philippians 4. Four through seven, and again, as what I speak is what one some of the things that can hinder. It says, "Rejoice in the Lord always." And again, I say, "Rejoice." We know that, and we do that. We rejoice in the Lord. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Then he goes on to say, and to be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Amen. He's anxiously waiting to hear from us. 
He does not have call waiting or any of those things at all. Leave a message. He's got the message. I'm sending you something back. Sometimes it's wait a little while. And sometimes it's anxiously taken care of and resolved. But even more than just praying and being thankful. I mean, so many times when we pray, we don't even remember to be thankful. This is in the morning when I rise up, you hear my voice. In the morning, I call out to you and I wait with expectation. Not only are we going to call out, but we're expecting something to happen. Be thankful. And I like as it goes on there because it says, in the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind. And right now with all the difficulties that are going on, so important to guard our heart and our mind. As I said, the people in uh, the mental health care field and the health care field are overloaded with people that are struggling. They say depression's gone up and a whole list of negative things have gone up at this time. And yet at this time, are there open doors for us to maybe get a chance to speak to somebody? There was a man that was over yesterday that I was talking to and broke down and was crying and saying, he and his wife were just going through a divorce. It's like everything that's going on in that as well. It's so much, so much. But knowledge, and, oh, when we talk about our anxiety, another verse I, I think of is um, casting all our anxieties upon him. And sometimes the load that we carry stops us from getting the thankfulness and the gratitude that God wants to give us. And he says, come on to me, all you that are burdened and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Yes. And by gosh, sometimes we really need a good rest, but we don't give it up. Right. We need to give it up. Mm. Thinking about casting, I would say, if I was doing jail ministry, I'd say, there's hardly a guy that doesn't know how to fish and doesn't know how to cast a long ways. You cast a long ways, you don't spook the fish, the better chance to get one. Right, James? Right. <laughs> but, so, cast a long ways. But when it comes to our anxieties, we become the worst fishermen in the world. Ploop, right alongside of the boat, easy for me to pick up. And we do. It's gone for a moment, but back again. And really release it, whatever it is, for you, for me, who release it. Let, release your anxieties. I mean, all I see is a picture of Jesus, not just on the cross with his arms like this, but always waiting to wrap them around us and embrace us. Amen. Those are some of the things that... I've had knowledge, but knowledge doesn't, know, doesn't do any good without application. Right. We can know, could have a doctor who studied to be a doctor, but never has practiced a moment. I know right now probably half the people here have keys in their, in their pocket, but until they apply them to the ignition, they're not going anywhere. Peter was a, I love that guy. <laughs> but I mean, he was, he was a guy that's going to put his foot in the water and jump right in. I don't think he went like this. I think he just jumped right in. And as long as our eyes are on the Lord, he's got some great things in store for us. Amen. We could do what the other guys in the boat didn't do. <laughs> When you think about people even in the hospital today, it is so different. Half of healing and getting better was the person around them. Their loved ones encouraging them, holding their hand. And all of a sudden, 
Are they less anxious now? Not at all. They're full of anxiety and less likely to heal at the rate that they typically would with loved ones there. And it's difficult for both people. Difficult to leave your loved one there and difficult for that loved one to be there. Natalie's dad had some strokes earlier this summer and he was away for a, a period of time. Mm -hmm. Difficult for him and certainly difficult for the rest of the family as is so, for so many others. The church here has been valuable in so many ways. It was here where my son Chris found the Lord in a very live and meaningful way. And was so excited he couldn't help but share it with everybody. And I was like, Chris, you can't send out, you know, 10, 12 text messages to everybody. And Natalie got so many one day, her friend says, I think you should block him. <laughs> <laughs> but he was so on fire, he couldn't help himself. He, even understanding, I'm like, this is just too much for some people. But he was on fire, and I pray we'd all catch a fire like that. Amen. Amen. That's right. But the church body here, as we leave, will be, we will greatly miss you. Uh, it's like, I've been to a lot of churches when I've been in Florida, but it's not the same, not close. Right. Amen. There isn't a second runner-up. <laughs> <laughs> and losing both Gabe and Chris, um, Natalie and I spent some time in some grief counseling in Travers, and it was difficult. And one day as we're there, um, one of the gentlemen, uh, he spoke of losing his son. And he said the thing that bothered him most was of um, Christians that said that he's in a better place. And they were, not, they were not believers. And when it was Natalie's turn to speak, she was like, that is the hope that we have that Gabe is everything he wasn't and Chris is everything that he wasn't. And he's in the Lord's hands mm -hmm. and enjoying life in a way that we can't imagine. Thank you. That asking him if we had that opportunity, would you like to come back? As much as we would love to see him, love to hear their voices, they wouldn't want to come back from where they are. Yes. That is the great hope for all of us. Yes. That's right. Yes. And completing, as we're with our families this holiday, um, that I would pray we could have meaningful conversation. Sometimes when you do Funerals, there are, um, you pass a mic around and you get to say good things. But unfortunately, the thing, good things that are heard are heard by the people that are sitting there, not the person that we're speaking of. Mm -hmm. So if there's good things that you'd want to say, I would encourage you to say them to a living body that can appreciate it. Amen. In finishing, Speaking of thankfulness, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. No hesitation, not a little break here. And says, um, if there's a, a break in what we feel in our relationship, it says, uh, draw near to him and he will draw near to you. He is anxiously waiting to have that kind of relationship. Dear Lord, I just thank you for this morning. I thank you for each person that's here. For whatever they might be going through, Lord, I just pray that you touch that area in their life. 
I thank you for loving us, caring for us. I thank you for your grace and mercy. Lord, I just ask that you would touch each family as they gather, Lord, that we could find words of encouragement and hope for them. Lord, that when we hear that there's two things we don't speak of anymore, it's religion and politics. Lord, I pray that your name would be mentioned. Lord, I thank you for all these things. And Lord, I just ask that you would be with this church body that we've been so blessed by. Lord, I just thank you and I praise you for all that you've done. In Christ's name, amen.